Hi everyone and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security advice along the way. I'm your host and all-around security nerd Corey Knockreiner and this is the episode for the week starting September 8th, 2014. Since I've had to travel in Italy and Germany this week for work, I've had to post this video update late, and I'm going to go through this week's three stories very quickly. Let's start with software updates. This week, of course, was Microsoft Patch Day, and as promised, Microsoft released four bulletins. The most important one is an Internet Explorer patch that fixes many vulnerabilities in the popular browser, many that can allow drive-by downloads, so go get that. The next updates fix DOS, or denial of service flaws, in both link server and the .NET framework. And finally, there was an update for one of the components in Windows that fixed a local elevation of privilege flaw. So if you have Windows Internet Explorer, link server, or the .NET framework, be sure to get those patches. Adobe also shares Microsoft Patch Day, and they released some Flash updates that fixed 12 vulnerabilities in the popular Internet Browser plugin. And these could also allow for drive-by download attacks. So be sure if you use Flash to go get it. By the way, Adobe said they'd release a reader patch as well, but they delayed that update for some reason. The next story is an update on the Home Depot breach. Of course, last week I talked about the rumored Home Depot breach. Well, this week Home Depot did confirm the breach. They warned that 2,200 of their stores in the United States has had malware on their system since April of this year. So if you used any sort of debit or credit card in their store, you may be affected by this breach. They do say that it doesn't affect Home Depot online or probably not the Mexican Home Depot stores. Anyways, if you did use your card, be on the lookout for an email from your bank or from Home Depot. You may have to replace the card. But don't worry, Home Depot says they will actually cover any fraudulent charges on the card. In other news, last week I mentioned how Brian Krebs suggested that the malware associated with this breach, the point-of-sale malware, was probably the same malware and maybe even group that attacked Target. And that, of course, is the uh, black POS or back off malware. However, this week another researcher claims that the malware used in the Home Depot breach was different. So we'll probably continue to learn about how this breach happened, but for the time being, if you used your card in Home Depot, you might want to consider replacing them. For the final and biggest story this week, there was another Gmail or Google credential leak. At least there seems to be another leak. On a particular Bitcoin forum this week, a hacker released a, a database of over 5 million different credentials for Gmail accounts. Now, uh, since this leak, Google has actually verified some of these credentials and they found that less than 2% of the credentials are actually accurate. So this may actually just be a post of some old uh, consolidated Gmail leak from the past. So I wouldn't worry too much about this, uh, but there are sites out there that you might want to visit to see if your email is affected or on this particular Gmail list. By the way, one of my uh, email aliases that I use was on this list, but I can confirm that the password used was one from years and years ago that I don't use at all. So likely this is a, a post from three years ago. In any case, it might be a good idea to update your Gmail uh, account if you like to. And more importantly, I really highly recommend using Gmail or Google's two-token authentication as it really improves the security of your account. So that's it for this week's really quick on the road episode. I'm sorry I had to post it late due to travel. Since I really didn't cover these stories in much detail, be sure to check out the reference section in the blog post associated with this video since it will have a lot of links that explain the stories in more detail, as well as extra links to other security stories that happen throughout the week. I will be traveling next week as well, so I still may have to post the video late, but I hope to see you then. And as always, for more regular security news, be sure to subscribe to the WatchGuard Security Center blog, follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, and follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. Thanks for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.